Bros Podcast. Welcome, all you beautiful people, to the Humanist Podcast once more. With me, your grandfather host, Nurgle. And by my side, it is Steph. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, Steph. I think today it's going to be you... a Nurgle cast. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Because today you the... are the illest. Yeah, I am definitely the uh, the most plagued <laughs> today. So, like you can probably hear, I'm not 100% well, but it's not COVID, thankfully. I, I did have to have like a 20 centimeter stick uh, lodged in my nostrils for, or like through my entire no- nasal cavity for 20 yeah. seconds, which was, it was not pleasant it was not as bad as people make it out to be but still <laughs> it was not pleasant it's not it something you stuff. want to do every day it's not for for pleasure no yeah. <laughs> uh, so how how are you doing are you healthy i'm healthy yeah i i guess i had like i was afraid that i was gonna be um come down with a cold because you know the the weather temperature switched recently yeah, for there it's been too. very like up and down here in Norway. It's been very like it's going up and down by ten degrees Celsius. Yeah. you know, and the shift in like, temperature yeah. is dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but uh, to be, I'm I, living I got evidence. Through, um, it didn't, uh, you know, I, it didn't end up in a cold. So recently, yeah. I've just been, I don't know, enjoying my Xbox and um, yeah. Man, that monolith is really growing on me. Mm-hmm. Literally. I mean, I see. I I have some mates that have um, you know purchased the PS Five as well. Oh yeah. And I think that one of them actually caved. I don't know this, but he was like posting images of like scalpers on Fin.no, which oh, is shit. like a eBay Norwegian style. Yeah. Um, and um, they were like you know going for outrageous prices like i think one was like forty thousand kroner nook oh shit yeah (laughs) which is basically like what thirty three thousand five hundred dollars um which is like (laughs) insane markup on a ps5 yeah uh but i think it's sold and this guy that my friend he he posted this on on our group on our facebook like chat group and he kept posting like more and more outrageous scalper prices. The first one was like twelve thousand knock, and then it was like twenty thousand, and then the last one was forty thousand something. Jesus Christ! Uh, and then, like one day later, he posted a picture of his own PS Five standing in his <laughs> living room. And I'm like, what did you do? It sold out for like you know weeks and or months even. How did you get that now? And why did you get it so late? Like, yeah, I don't know. Let's hope, um, because Dankian told me that on the, um, I think this was, if you ordered, uh, like El Shop, our uh, resident <laughs> Norwegian large <laughs> electronics and, and stuff like a retailer, um, they, they had like this additional stock. So they were going to sell stock Ooh. on this one day i, I like I, it's not that long ago but then if you ordered before 10 a.m um it would if you managed to get your or, your order in then they would ship it the same day if you order managed to order it before one o'clock you would get it sometime before christmas so i know Duncan was gonna was gonna try to jump try on to that i don't know yeah. i don't know how successful it was but but let's let's hope that your friend did that instead of yeah, uh, no. the f- <laughs> four the f- feeding the scalpers. four thousand dollar yeah <coughs> galpers man i mean that's i mean i i understand when it's limited you know that's the kind of market economics it'll always happen so yeah, I agree, yeah but but still but imagine like, just being that dude be <laughs> yeah and imagine being the dude buying the stuff you know like yeah four thousand dollars for a ps5 yeah. <laughs> just to not wait two months you know I mean, if you're a millionaire, I guess fuck it. But then, yeah, sure. Uh, for yeah. any other person, <laughs> it's still it's still not good economic sense. Even if you're a millionaire, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, it, it really I isn't. Mean, 
Yeah, but people. Okay, so today our topic is going to be game of the year uh, nominees and kind of categories. We're just going to be discussing basically the uh, the nomination announcement mm -hmm. for 2020. And um, I guess uh, we can get, you know, we can do our predictions as well. Yeah, sure. We can kind of pitch in on that. Um, so if you want to, we, we're going to start with the big daddy, the, the game of the year, you know, the goatee himself, the, the big goatee title. Yeah. Um, and we have the nominees. It's Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Animal Crossing, New Horizons. And The Last of Us Part Two. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's what's your favorite here to to win. I would say. Uh, I mean, okay. So to preface, I've played all of the four of these. I've played um, everything except Hades and Animal Crossing. I've only played Hades. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for I don't know. I have a. My personal favorite in this one is probably going to be, as an overall package, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. It surprised me on so many, in so many ways. And um, I thought it was going to be a solid 8 out of 10 title. It turned out to be so much more. Um, it wasn't just checklist Assassin's Creed kind of game. Um, it added so much more and was so much more polished than I could ever have expected. And not to mention the freaking... The, the multiplayer update that was free, which is yeah. like a, its entire own beast, which, uh, you know, I'm planning to play with Dankian soon. Mm -hmm. But I tried it a bit myself, and I love it. It's it's a great value. So overall, Ghost of Tsushima takes it for me. Um, mm -hmm. But you think, do you think that, I mean, that's your personal kind of choice for the champion, yes. but will it win? Do you think that that'll be the game of the I, year? Maybe I my I'm I'm a little bit torn between it could be I think it could be Hades as well. Yeah, you think it would be Hades because Hades is like more of a indie title, you know. Even it is an indie high. title, um, but I think that that <laughs> might help it a little bit as well because it's a yeah. it's, it becomes more of an, it's underdog. an underdog. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I think so too. You know, and and it's been it's praised up its ass and out its nostrils, <laughs> so mm, yeah, and for good reason, for what I could see. So, yeah, I mean, I've played it to some extent, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. If you like roguelites, it's it's the best. Basically, it's the best. Yeah, and that, and that's that's a pretty strong statement too. So if you, if you're yeah. if you are willing to watch for it to that extent that makes it already in my mind a pretty strong contender so because mm. i think a lot of people yeah, agree with you it it kind of blends it takes like the the best of roguelites gameplay and you know like the pick up and play nature of it you can just kind of keep grinding and grinding on it right. uh and mixes it up with a very interesting setting and story that is you know not too overwhelming Basically, a lot of people in our age category, I feel, like this type of game because it's very easily accessible. Just pick it up and play, and you get like spoon-fed some of the story like slowly over time. And it develops. It's also a very like strategic kind of develop a you know title like you slowly accumulate resources, and some some of the upgrades you get are persistent, some are not. Mm -hmm. Um, somewhere random in like your uh, when you when you're doing the 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 hack and slash part or yeah right so it's uh yeah it, I would it's a very strong contender for me but right. I don't think I don't think it will win you don't think so no which one because, do you think will win I don't know I think maybe. I think The Last of Us Part Two will win. Oh, yeah, controversial. Explain. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you no, know, I just think that that's kind of the <laughs> not to get political, but I think that that will be um, the the right choice to make <laughs> for the judges. You know? <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. It's you know, it's vo voted in from kind of 
all around the world. So I might be very wrong on that. But I think, I think that that will maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll be mad if it wins because um, no, I was no, one of those not. people for which the, the entire thing really clicked and it worked. Yeah. So. And I feel, I feel that like if you're going to be objective about it, how they, you know, all the, the chances they took and the payoff they got story wise and stuff like that, it's it's like hallmarks of good, you know, game development, basically. Yeah. And that's why I think they t like Final Fantasy Remake and Doom Eternal are just much more run of the mill. You know, that yeah, yeah. they don't take, you know, maybe, yeah, let's not get into that too much. We'll, we'll get back to that. But uh, I feel that Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy Remake are a lot more kind of safe choices. Last of Us Part 2 is a little bit more controversial. True. Uh, Animal Crossing is like super bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> almost it a, hilariously so. It's a very, but yeah. it's like a, it's it's one of the staples of Nintendo though, having those really tried and true formulas that are easy to expand upon enough that people will come back and it's still a solid effort. They always like keep it very polished. Um, yeah, and to be fair, it's, it's hard to kind of improve upon, you know, such a game, which is all, all, already kind of, perfected to a hair's breadth you know yeah <laughs> but 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 nintendo can do if anyone can nintendo is like you know specializing in that area yeah and i feel like this game i i'm sure it's deserving of all the price it's getting but it's also it doesn't have that wow factor like that, that that's like this yeah game it doesn't take any chances unmissable it's like an experience like no no yeah. i think this game also was helped a lot by the rona you know yeah yeah right yeah because it was a commercial huge commercial success for nintendo yeah and i think it was uh it became kind of like this peaceful escapism from all this shit going on this year yeah um, yeah sure and i think that's a it's a great for what it is but i i it's for me far from being a game of the year yeah i don't think i mean it could probably win but it's i don't think it either i think that it's either between Ghost of Tsushima or The Last of Us Part Two, I think. Okay. Personally, uh, all right. So th that's it. I, I like it. We have different. We have different um, predictions. Yeah. So, but for but I hope Fantasy, Hades would win. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I think the three. Uh, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Last of Us Part Two. I, I won't be mad if any of them get chosen. Um, no, no. If Final Fantasy VII remake gets chosen, I'll be a little bit like. Uh, really because <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a good game it's very solid in a lot of ways but then <coughs> yeah let's <laughs> talk a little bit about that sorry yeah uh, and i mean to be fair this game was actually one of those um the first games we were going to cover on this on this podcast but then we had yeah. to redo it so many times that we got bored of it <laughs> yeah um but you know i did play through it and i found that you know the cutscenes and all that beautiful uh the graphics are beautiful um and i i also liked the changes of the story because it's not really you know they changed it in some drastic ways um it, it seems like they you know they went for like a parallel universe kind of thing um yeah i i just hope it doesn't turn into like a kingdom hearts level of arbitrarily convoluted right. but i yeah. i did like that it the implications and what and um you know, the it gives opportunities to explore characters that you know maybe didn't wasn't so involved in mm. in the original. So I like that. But then the combat for me got really tedious after a while. Yeah. And yeah. As, yeah. And and I, I it was really immersion breaking when you know character models are really nice and all that, and then suddenly when you're in the slums. And then you look up at the Midgar, um, you know the 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 whole platform thing. You, you look up, for, yeah. When you look up to it from below and you zoom in with the photo mode, you can see you can easily tell that it's it's just it's just a wallpaper kind of. You know, it's a skybox. Oh, and yeah. of course, I know they can't render the whole model or anything. But then it it also once you see it once you it's very it became very noticeable for me the rest and then it didn't feel as 
immersive anymore. So yeah, yeah it's funny how like one thing like that can kind of take you out. Yeah, uh, it's almost like harder to do when it's such a high polished game. Yeah, because that one little thing amongst all the other details was the one thing that you know pulled you out of the of the immersion. Yeah, and. I just hope that the next game. I, I liked it though, um, but I, yeah. I hope that the next game in the series um, will introduce more off the beaten path exploration, which I think it will, because the first part obviously is Midgar, which was confined, and then I just hope that the next one will introduce more opportunities the for grinding yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, yeah, you're you're mentioning stuff that I like there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't play the game, but. <laughs> When it, we discussed it a little bit on like the scrapped podcast about the combat system and stuff, and it lands for me at least like a little bit in the middle of where I want a, a Final Fantasy combat system to be. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah, that's kind of where I stand on it. I I just burned myself so much on on thirteen that uh, I yeah. I just never got back into Final Fantasy mainstream titles. I mean, yeah, this one it feels like it's somewhere in between uh, the turn-based ones and 15. And 15, yeah. So it's kind of moving, at least I think it's moving in the right direction, but this is a remake, so I guess they had to do like that <coughs> moderation. Yeah, but I, I feel like they also kind of sh should have just stuck to one or the other because uh, for me, yeah, because it's more... Doesn't... The combat system was really good, and I liked yeah. the action part of uh, 15 as well. So, and to be fair, I never played Crisis Core. I played 15 a little bit. I didn't like the combat there. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one uh, or the other at least. Yeah, but still, Final Fantasy 7 remake, very ambitious, very anticipated, hyped. Uh, did not. I mean, I, according to reviews, it did not deliver. You know, fully. It wasn't bad reviews like you. Maybe a lot of reviewers were like you. They liked the game, but they were not, you know, they were not ecstatic. Yeah, and that's um, I think that's the consensus. Uh, so it was like an eight out of ten, maybe for me. Yeah, definitely is, good uh, game, yeah. solid game, but not like that jewel that you would herald <laughs> for your friends and family. Not at all. Doom no. Eternal, I think, is actually a more solid choice for what it brings. Um, yeah, because Doom Eternal was like very was a, almost a little bit more surprising that it was so good. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah. Do you want to kind of delve? Yeah, just a lot of YouTube videos, but not uh, not myself. No, <laughs> and yeah, I don't yeah. have that that Doom connection like you have. Yeah. Um. So for me, it was you know interesting to see that they try to experiment with incorporating those old gameplay mechanics from the old games mm -hmm. just in a kind of new fashion you know and, and trying to modernize old gameplay mechanics basically just use them but have a modern spin on them i agree um I, so i think that that's also a, a solid choice but i think it's not the best of these uh when it comes to game of the year you know, yeah, it doesn't deliver on every like every parameter, which a game of the year absolutely should. Yeah, but it's hard, you know, it's hard to kind of pick amongst the jewels. So yeah, so that's but, uh, that's yeah. our predictions and our <laughs> our picks. The... Yeah, that's our discussion of the the goat title. Um. But yeah, so moving on, we have like the the best game direction, mm -hmm. which is like the creative vi vision and innovation. Game direction, uh, yeah. And also here we have basically almost all the same games, but Half Life Alex is instead of Doom Eternal, and Animal Crossing: New Horizons is not on this list. Yeah, so, so it's uh, <laughs> five picks. It's five picks, yeah. Uh, so we have Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Half-Life, Alex, and The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah. What do you think about like game direction? This is a bit different. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more difficult too because 
let's say, for example, I don't think Seven Remake is a strong contender in this at all because I, I no. feel like it didn't innovate. And no, um, the right. creative vision was like, I mean, it's Seven Children butter on top of a slice of FF7 bread. So I don't think this one is yeah. very... Uh, they had a pretty safe route to go yeah. here. But Ghost of agree. Tsushima... Yeah, go on. No, I would agree with uh, like your assessment there that they valued you know the risk of uh, of going off in a very different direction and they moderated themselves and kind of did a, an in-between kind of solution yeah which is you know they they wanted to innovate a little bit but they wouldn't risk pissing off the fans too much because they knew that that would be yeah a disaster yeah so um Ghost of Tsushima, though, I think yeah. had well the innovation side. I'm not so sure, uh, but the creative vision in it, I thought, was really good because you know it has it's very beautiful to look at, but it's also how instead of having a very cluttered um, heads up display and all that, you know, with a lot of information and markers and stuff, they focused more on having the game world actually guide you. Yeah. Uh, in a more organic that's like, way. Yeah. That's a very good way to design a game. Yeah. Actually. I that that itself um did a lot for both the immersion and for the, the world building. So I thought Ghost of Tsushima did a great job here. Um <coughs> but what, what did you think? Yeah, I absolutely think that Ghost of Tsushima is a contender here. Creative vision is still, you know. Even though they the formula is you know used before, uh, I feel that the art design and uh, stuff like that also was very strong here. Oh yeah. Um, so they that's kind of the part of the creative side, um, and uh, yeah, like you said, trying to make it as natural as possible to mm. to teach the player and guide the player. Um, is and kind of not be um, interrupted to the experience is very important in the game direction and, and the design. So right. I think that it's a very strong contender. Hades hey, think, is, yeah. yeah, it's also like a, it's kind of a perfection of what you want a game to be, mm -hmm. both in design and direction, I th feel. Creative vision, yeah, they've got something, you know, the setting and, and uh, the Greek mythology type of stuff. A little bit of dating sim, a little bit of sprinkled here and there. But I think that's not enough to kind of be the best, you know, in the creative department. And especially since it's it's a little bit confined because of its indie format to really explore uh kind of a vast and it's not really a new type of game you know it's a very explored genre which they perfected yeah but still so i don't feel that they stand as strong maybe as uh as uh, some of the other titles here right this one interesting so yeah for half-life alex in this one i think that it's a heavy hitter because uh, yeah from what i could see they just went a huge leap forward in in the mm. interactivity of VR, um, and it's a really good proof that you know VR is becoming more and more of a heavy hitter. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's like kicking its uh, kicking ass, trying to break its way out of the niche category. And Half Life Alex mm -hmm. is like a really good indicator of like um, it's something to keep an eye on. It's not necessarily such a niche anymore. So yeah, and you know, like here we can talk about outstanding creative vision, you know, because yeah. to make uh, like a full title in VR is very difficult, and uh, yeah, you just need to really be on the ball with everything, every system, everything needs to be polished, but you know, solved in practical ways, and yeah, it's I think that this one will take it probably for me. That's my pick. Mm -hmm. um even though i didn't like follow it that closely 
Um, but I think that The Last of Us Part Two also is a strong contender here. Uh, like you said, with the story and the, the, the um, game direction, very, very kind of, yeah, they they took chances and <laughs> it's a very good good game design for immersion. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And the, the stories, that, huh? Yeah, you played it, so... Yeah, the the story, the storyline separation, like the twist that you play as the antagonist, mm-hmm. as a second protagonist, what and force the player to sort of reconcile with someone they've spent half the game fucking slaughtering their way to in order to murder. Um, I think that was a very very brave choice. Yeah. Um, but you know, and I think that I liked it because for me, it managed to make me reconcile with the person. Um, and you know, I thought it was a cool move and it was nice because (coughs) it gave them a a small, um, gave them a, gave them a incentive to kind of like change up the gameplay a bit as well, because obviously the two protagonists have very different play styles and um i actually had more fun gameplay wise with playing as the antagonist <laughs> yeah and yeah. at the very end i was actually leaning more on her side rather than <laughs> yeah. ellie which is interesting yeah. um but that could also i think that ultimately the story wasn't told in the optimal way um so no. i think it was a great concept and a great story in there, but that it stumbled sometimes. Um, for sure, for sure. So I don't know. It's still a strong, a strong contender, but for me, it's still gonna be between Last of Us Part No, um, Half Life Alex and Tsushima. Tsushima, yeah, yeah. I think so too. That they are like likely to take that. Okay, so we're gonna go through. We're not gonna go through every every category because there are a lot of categories yeah and we would we would be sitting here till, until tomorrow but um i want to touch on uh, like uh best indie right uh which uh, the nominees are carrion uh four guys which is like <laughs> surprise <laughs> and uh hades uh spelunky 2 and spirit fair yeah so Spirit Fair was um, I don't know. Did you play any of these? Or <laughs> I played. I I own Carrion, um, yeah. and I watched a lot of you know when when the buzz was around Fall Guys. I watched a lot of it. I watched a friend play it. Uh, Hades, same thing. Spelunky. I saw the review. I saw that it got a lot of good reviews. Spirit Fair. I I contemplated buying, but ultimately for one reason or the other, I guess time constraint, I didn't buy it. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that for me too. I mean, Spirit Fair, the art, it's just insane on that game. Yeah. You almost can't believe it. You almost can't believe that this is an indie title. Uh, and like the, yeah, just very, very nice art. Um, but yeah, some just, it was like some reason for me too. Like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Yeah. So I never played it, but I, I I watched a lot of kind of praise uh, or very positive reviews of that one. Uh, and Hades, of course, I played. Fall Guys, <laughs> I actually never played, but uh, yeah, I've seen the memes. Yeah, it's essentially like a playable, really easily accessible version of uh, Takeshi's Castle. Like one of those yeah. the Japanese fucking punishment game show things that went on. And that's just still really popular over there. Yeah, I remember. I remember those videos, <laughs> like <laughs> back in like two thousand and eight or something. Yeah, where they would show the dub <laughs> version. Yeah, 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 the dub version. Oh my god! Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's so horrible too. But yeah, yeah. What do you think about Carrion, though? I thought Carrion was um was fun. It it, it was like. I mean, of course, me being a lover of Eldritch Horror, of course, yeah. uh, playing as this giant blob of essentially sentient shoggoth mm-hmm. math, like, yeah. like mass. It's um, 
it was fun, you know, uh, but it, I didn't feel compelled to play it um, to completion. No. Because it, it lost me along the way. Uh, but it was a solid yeah. title. It's fun, but it's like, um, yeah, it's, it was more like, uh, maybe 7.5 or something. It's worth checking out. It's not full price. You know, if it's on sale, check it out, that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. Um, but it's, to. uh, I think it's not an indie of the year for sure. No. Spelunky 2, which is like the follow up to Spelunky was you know, very, a very good title. I also followed that a little bit, but I didn't play myself. It's the linky one though. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything interesting to say about it other than it's like a very, seemed like a very solid title mm -hmm. all around. A little bit of innovation here and there and, uh, you know, a very high grade of polish. You just get uh, what you buy with that one right um i mean you get what you expect uh, i think that maybe it's, i i wouldn't bet on that winning best but i don't know it's hard to call because like fall guys people are gonna vote the hell out of that i think hades yeah a very strong contender yeah i th i personally i'll put my money on hades because um, yeah, I think Fall Guys is very gimmicky, um, and it had like a shit ton of buzz, but then it'll die very fast. It'll die like in two months, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's like I don't know. For me, I would pick Hades at these ones for sure. Yeah. I think Hades has yeah. more depth and more of like a lasting value. But hey, yeah, I think that. Who knows? Did you ever play Binding of Isaac? Uh yeah, I played some. That's of it. like, yeah, uh, that's like a good rogue like title, and it, I've been revisiting that game like maybe ten times, you know, yeah. through the year. The original, and it has like so much replayability, and Hades has that aspect that you can like because it has so much randomness, and you can kind of perfect perfect the playthrough. Mm -hmm. Which is very appealing to some people. So, yeah. I mean, Dangian. Not to, sounds yeah. like he. This is up his alley, and he he was the yeah. one who kind of, he was the the one of us who were to adopt it first, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. I didn't adopt it until very recently. So. Right. No, it, it's yeah, very. I think Hades is gonna take this one as well as it's my pick as well. Yeah, it's my pick as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Spirit Fair. It it looks really, really good, but I didn't play that, so I can't really you know, say anything too educated. Yeah. Um, but if that's something that if, if uh, one of you listeners have any experience with this game, then you know, don't hesitate to comment and let us know why. Right what do you think of comments. it? Right it's in the comments, boys. Right in the and comments. Okay, so moving on, we're just going to pick another category at random here. I think that best action adventure game is a good category. I don't mm -hmm. know about you. So we, yeah. have, uh, we have our <laughs> reoccurring buddies, Ghost of Tsushima. We have Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order here. We have The Last of Us Part Two, and uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. And also Assassin's Creed Valhalla and mm. Ori and the Wisp of the uh, Will of the Wisps. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what do you think here? The, uh, action adventure is the category, but there's a lot of action here. I would say. Yeah, well, it's the description of the the genre here is like for the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. I think yeah. um, all of these games definitely fit that bill, but yeah, 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 sure. But I think that the well, the, what I meant was just it's not the adventure games are not you know as popular as they once were. I mean, Zelda oh, well, had some had does have combat, you know, but still, uh, Breath of the Wild is very combat focused. It is compared to the 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 older Zeldas. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I what I immediately noticed is that there are quite a few different contenders here, and I like that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get to talk about some other yeah, games. Yeah, um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps are like is like very in contrast to something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I think. But yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That there are I different actually, moments. my money is a little bit on Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Because yeah. that game looks amazing and I've seen nothing but praise for it too. Yeah. I'm not gonna root for Star Wars Jedi <laughs> Fallen Order. Even though that's a good game, it's, it's not a solid you title. Know, it's it, it's just a solid title. Yeah. But it's a for bit me, like um gonna... Space Marine. It's a great proof of concept to test the waters, yeah. and then it's a great platform to expand upon. Didn't we rant about this? Probably. <laughs> Probably the because, third yeah, one. because <laughs> Like you said, that game, I mean, Star Wars, the IP is just so full of potential that it almost bursts. And I feel that this game was a very good proof of concept, but the execution was just, just slide, you know, slightly off uh, mm-hmm. a very, very, like a nine out of 10 title. Yeah, it, uh, it went just short. And yeah, I think eight out of 10 for me on that one. Yeah, it's like around there for me as well and uh yeah so it was a good game but i felt that it missed a little bit mm-hmm. on the mark so that's not my pick at least assassin's creed valhalla you have to fill in on that one uh, yeah it's 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 a fun game um but it's even for the assassin's creed titles it's a yeah. very safe entry and uh mm-hmm. you know some of the viking stuff the like i said in a previous episode like the the over romanticized um it, it it becomes a little bit too stereotypy too so it, it bore it sometimes it crosses over into cringe territory yeah um and but i like the main character though and i did like the um, gameplay loop but it's a little bit rough like Ubisoft titles tend to tend to be um, yeah. worth playing, but definitely not a game of the year. There are far stronger contenders in in this category. Yeah, and like yeah, we talked about Ghost of Tsushima. It's mm-hmm. probably one of the strongest contenders. Oh yeah, that is of these. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Miles Morales. Yeah, uh, it got you know very good reviews, but some a little bit like not. You know, not disappointed, but felt that it could have delivered even a little bit more. Okay, and what was the um, like in, in what areas? Do you remember? Yeah, like compared to the previous titles, mm-hmm. uh, like it was very, it was similar in many ways. To like the comet was a little bit more electrically induced, but uh, uh, yeah, that's the criticism I saw that it was like. It was good, but it maybe didn't have uh, the same crisp execution. I didn't play any mm. of uh, them, so I can't really, you know, well, I can't really vouch for that. But yeah, the, you, the interesting part about Miles Morales' inclusion here to me is that it it isn't a full, um, it because it's not like a finished title. It, well, it is. You a can fi- build on it. Yeah, it's. It's kind of like somewhere between a whole game and an uh, an old fashioned expansion pack. Yeah, or I guess maybe it is like the old types of expansion packs if you consider stuff like Oblivion's Shivering Isles. Um, yeah, it, I, I guess sure. it's comparable to that kind of expansion pack. So it, it doesn't really. Um, I wouldn't expect this one to to innovate too much because it is sort no. of like what the. The, the thing that Uncharted had as well. So Right, right. So maybe that criticism is like invalid a little bit invalidated. If this was Marvel Spider Man 2 Miles Morales, yeah. then I would expect more. Yeah. Um but it's, I think it's more like a content pack than a standalone game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's kind of like more like a, a, a smaller title made into a, or like an expansion pack made to a standalone. So Yeah. Um so I, I don't know. I haven't yeah, tried Miles Morales really myself, but yeah. No. I feel that, yeah. That explains kind of the criticism that I heard. Mm. 
it fits very well to what you just said that like the disappointment of it not being unique enough yeah um i mean it is unique but it's just like the same gameplay loop and in some areas the criticism was not even as good oh, i see or i mean that's kind of up to the beholder but you well know. um i think it's probably better a, a much better package than let's say the um, the the dlc packs that came for spider-man the the first one so yeah i think that you know if you know what this is but, it's but a yeah really great title but yeah yeah it's it's probably I, I, I don't think the criticism was you know that hard but it was an, yeah a 10 out of 10 the title right. you know um and then we have the last of us again. <laughs> <laughs> the last of us for the last time. Yeah. So you loved the gameplay, and you wanted to. You almost loved the like the uh, the antagonist side more. You wanted. <laughs> you, you thought that style was better. I almost loved. I think all aspects of this, but not quite. Yeah um so for me this one was like i mean the gameplay is a modification of the first one and i thought that it, it does what it does pretty solidly um mm -hmm. and the narration i like the bold the boldness and that the, the the emotions it made me feel uh actually elevated this one into great territory for me so yeah. I would say this one for me was a nine, but it's it's with an asterisk, you know. That is like if yeah. the twist works for you. If it doesn't, this could be like a fucking dumpster fire. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, in terms of action adventure, I don't feel. I feel like I got more out of Tsushima, and I think yeah. that from what I've seen of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I think that one also is a very solid. So for me, it's between those two. Mm -hmm. in this Sounds category cool. okay so moving on to the next random wait wait no, what's, what's yours so what's yours for this one well um i'm actually not sure but i would go with sushima right yeah, just based on my own kind of impressions of that game <laughs> uh i would not go with star wars, star wars sorry but that doesn't that doesn't cut it for me for a game of the year title. If we rate by potential, then Star uh, Wars that, uh, would, that would win. Yeah, it, it would it would win for me because the potential is so. And I love that you know the older Star Wars uh, Jedi Academy and stuff like oh. that. Just fucking loved them to bits. So and it's almost a little bit too nostalgic for me. I'm I'm biased. The Jedi Knight games. Um... Uh, we are both fans of those, and I think oh, that yeah. because of that, you owe it to yourself to watch the latest episode of The Mandalorian. Yeah, that's all I'm <laughs> gonna say. That. But yeah. uh, it was a very, very, very heavy indication that some Jedi Knight stuff is coming. Is gonna come? Yeah, I saw some kind of stirrings. Uh, deep in the, in the web. Now, if I get my Kyle Katarn in live action, I'm oh, gonna oh. be a very happy cookie. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'll I'll pray to Disney. I'll I'll suck Disney's big Mickey Mouse cock. Proboscis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> proboscis. Sorry, sorry, the, people. The it's huge, a, the huge look for him with proboscis. <laughs> The huge look for it, yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> uh, do you wanna uh, okay. do you wanna go for Royal RPG? RPG, yeah, we can go RPG. I did not. I just looked it over. I did not um, recognize too many titles except Final Fantasy VII, of course. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did you? Uh, I'm you. You have like there. You know, there's um, Persona in there. Yep. Did I've you play played that? all of these actually to some to oh. to uh, less a uh, bigger or lesser extent. Well, that's um, swell, huh? That's just swell. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought, and I have some opinions here because 
my overall personal potential pick for game of the year. Um, if I were to yeah, pick the, the like I was, I, I'm currently playing through. This might not come as a surprise to anyone that's been listening to this podcast, but uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Mm -hmm. I'm playing through it now, and by God, have I! It's been such a long time since I've just laughed and enjoyed an RPG to that extent. Um, but then also <laughs> Persona Five Royal. I didn't try yeah. Royal. I played through Persona Five Standard. Yeah. Um, but if like from I have a, a friend who's like very, very you know very dedicated and uh, to Persona Five, um, and he played through Royal, and mm. he told me that Royal added a lot of good stuff to the game, and the game itself is already, um, you know, one of the absolute best RPGs of the 2010s. Easy. Okay. Yeah. So that's. That's some praise. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it, it was just that good. It was like. But you would still, you would still pick Yakuza like a dragon for this one. Mostly because I haven't actually played Royal, and I thought that yeah. um, I laughed more, and I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a tough one between those two. But Yakuza like a dragon is shaping up to be uh, my game of the year if the quality keeps up, because it's just like, um, I was a bit worried. Like many others, when the Yakuza previously beat him up, um, beat him up kind of game with free roam and with like heavy fo story focus, which suddenly turned yeah. into an RPG and or like a turn based RPG. It's always mm -hmm. had RPG mechanics, but it translated the Yakuza universe so well into the um, turn based RPG mechanics. And they explain a lot of these things even halfway canonically, which was like it's just so self aware and the um, localization the the text mm -hmm. the, the english translation of this is fucking hilarious at times i was sitting there I, <laughs> is I, it I like on purpose bad or is yeah it... it's not bad yeah. it's just it's funny like the word use yeah. is really really humorous and uh, there were so many Maybe... times where i just had to pause the game and just sit there and face palm and just like laugh it off a little bit before i could continue yeah, but but do you think that your knowledge of Japanese culture and the, the language helps you there? Could be, but not yeah. necessarily for the localization itself, because it's not it's not because of how um, because you need to understand what they said in Japanese and then read the English to find it funny. It's just like the way they wrote it in English. Yeah, like what they wrote there is is freaking funny, and I'm sure they had a blast. Uh, at work during the time they worked on this. <laughs> I mean, you're so. I it sounds freaking awesome, especially the combat. Yeah, the combat. <laughs> you're, you're getting my Fabuscus all stiffy. Uh, yeah, and, uh... <laughs> I mean, to 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 elaborate a little bit, like the the main character, the reason, like they explain it that he perceives it as turn based because he was a huge fan of Dragon Quest growing up. Oh my god, that's that's genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and and like when when the at first the enemies you fight they they look kind of standard, just like people in suits, like random people on the street that just pick a fight. But yeah, after he picks up this bat that's buried in the ground, he <laughs> they make out like this this spiked bat to be kind of like Excalibur, and and Ichiban yeah. is the only guy who managed to pull it out of the ground, and then it and then that unlocks his hero class. Oh Which is, <laughs> and and then they say like after that um there's this fight that you this is the tutorial so you get to try out that new class where he fights with a bat but he uses it as a sword yeah. <laughs> and suddenly like these people suddenly they're holding like an umbrella and then like um, a garbage can um lid as a sword and shield and you know like they become more rpg ish yeah and then yeah. they were like and after the fight, it's like, oh shit! Like, did you guys see him transform? They're like, no. I think your your imagination is just that strong. It's like, oh yeah, I guess it's been that way since I was little. So they just kind of explain <laughs> all these things. Yeah, and it's genius. Cool. It's just uh, I thought the way they integrated it was so great, and I laughed so much during this game so that's, far. Yeah, that's very original. I think that kind of South the South Park RPGs also did that to some extent, yeah. but 
that's more that's a little bit easier than to kind of incorporate it into a fully 3d models you know true realized universe and they that's are really cool yeah i uh, this game i think um it's an absolute worthy game for you to try as well i think you would mm. also have, have a blast with this not to mention what about boring. wasteland yeah go on yeah what about wasteland 3 you also played that one right yeah and you told me that you love that yeah, i did uh it's also a very solid title but then it is very rough around the edges uh, okay yeah yeah, so, yeah there was some jank yeah That's so the, there's there's some jank and there's some there's a lot of bugs and it crashed quite a few times and like it's a very solid game but it also you know i i'd say it's more on depending on like how you think of the how much do bugs matter to you it's yeah. gonna be between like a seven and an eight kind of title so it's not it's a great title but it's not when the contenders if competitors are persona royal and like a dragon it's um it's not on that it level fades a little bit. yeah so yeah. yeah even though it's like a indie category i guess yeah it's still a little bit too rough you feel and genshin impact is there if you want to spend a fuck ton of money on microtransactions <laughs> yeah okay yeah <laughs> i don't know this game what is this it's like a, a mobile jrpg or something yeah it's multi-platform so it's it's also on pc and and i think ps4 um wow. but it is a very solid game uh mechanically and all that like production value is really high on this it takes mm -hmm. a lot of inspiration from the likes of breath of the wild and such um okay. so it is yeah. a fun game i think and it's a, it's uh, it's good but then I, from what I heard, it's like you can play maybe around the first 30 hours without feeling like you have to spend money. And then the grind walls start to become more and more apparent. So, yeah, it's like good old Total Biscuit always said when you, you put that incentive into a game for the game mm. developers mm. to make it harder, you know, for and easier to, to pay the money. Yeah. It's just you, you can never trust humans in that situation no, you know no, no. just yeah but still i mean if you get a good solid 30 hours that's a lot of gameplay you know it is it is so um, not gonna bash it too hard it, it has a lot of things going for it and i have a couple of friends playing it um relatively uh, i wouldn't say religiously but i i'm pretty sure they log in at least every day so yeah. you know it, it has stuff going for it but yeah, for me, like Persona 5 Royal and Yuxa Like a Dragon are the two like absolute tops. And to be honest, I think Persona 5 is gonna take it. If unless Genshin yeah. does. So I mean like you, yeah, like you described it, you your friend seemed to be <laughs> very excited about that one. Yeah. That's in the in the last decade, so that has to count for something. I think Five Royal is a game that I would definitely play if I didn't have to buy the entire game over. Um, mm. at yeah, full price. Play five. yeah. So if if I could just buy the Royal Edition upgrade or something for a reduced price, like even even uh, Warriors or Orochi did that mm. for once. So if if Persona Five did that as well, I would I would play it. But if I have to play the entire game, all those 130 hours over again just to get to the new content or like, well, yeah, I just know I, I don't want to do that. No, even though it's a good game, I, I guess it's, it's like that with some role playing games that the, the, the length of the game is just even though you fucking love it, you just can't be bothered in this modern day and age to play like you said 130 hours because that's that's a large investment i play yeah exactly i played persona 5 while i was a student <laughs> in one of mm. the semesters which was on the more chill side so i had the time to do this yeah. and i loved it but I, I i felt like after those 130 hours i was like yeah this game i loved it but then now i'm kind of done <laughs> i'm done yeah and i and i feel that's that's fair you know you can play a game to death even though you love it mm -hmm. you'll never play it again yeah like you feel me 
And some games are not like that. Some games invite you back to play it again and again and again. Mm, yeah. Maybe, you know, in five or six years' time, maybe I'll get Royal. Um, yeah. Maybe by that time, the cooldown is, is uh, done. <laughs> the cooldown is reset. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 10 years cooldown on that one. <laughs> maybe not, 10 not years, bad. Still, it's yeah. the same for, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I played, uh, I bought, oh my God, I've, I bought all the Zelda remakes on 3DS, you know, mm. just for the nostalgia. And yeah. the, I've played those on emulators like thousands of times <laughs> over. So, <laughs> but oh, yeah. it seemed like those were actually good, like really worthy remakes or like remasters as well, though. Yeah, they were, they were really good. I hoped for new content also, like, I always do that. Yeah, <laughs> I always do that because you know you get so nostalgic, but you do want some. Just not not a lot, but if you just make like one bonus dungeon or something like that, or you know some kind of end game grindy goal, yeah. uh, like uh, another collectible, and the reward could be substantial. I would totally dig that, but I feel that they. Nintendo's kind of, they're kind of cautious in that area, but they had some extra content for for both the games, but yeah, mm, just not yeah. that impact. It's always un, not imp impactful for the game play. It's just another mini game twist or something like that, you know, collect these stamps like in Wind Waker, you know, HD, it was the stamps. For, oh yeah, yeah, and and uh, also like some quality of life things, or the picto challenge was a little bit easier, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, you could take more pictures in one go, <laughs> and yeah, I appreciate that. But I would like you know one more one more dungeon. Come on, you 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 redo the entire engine. You can <laughs> you can design one more dungeon for us, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> at least that's what the way I feel. But I still buy them and I still love them. With some with some sweet sweet loot at the end. Yeah, sure. Because that's you know I'm a sucker for that grind, that end game. You just want to be as powerful as possible. You want to go to the first enemy that you ever fought in the game and just fucking rip its proboscis off and <laughs> shove it up. It's <laughs> it's lurk for them behind. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. I uh, couldn't agree more on that. And I think that it's always that little bit of extra um, sort of uh, endorphin release when you, if you play through a game of remaster, you're enjoying the graphics. And then you discover oh, yeah. that, oh, there is, there. wow, this is new? Mm. And they add something new. And, and um, you're so fucking you're the the <laughs> you're so jolly, you know. Yeah. You're so giddy when if you discover like, oh my god, this is this is new. Yeah. I never never had this before. You know, even, <coughs> even Demon Souls the the remake has this uh, small new thing going for it. Oh my god, yeah. Don't don't get me started on Demon Souls. I've tried not to spoil myself, but I saw yeah. the door. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. Did Just you automatically click that video? Yeah. Did you? Um, did you also see after they discovered what was inside? No, I didn't. Or I saw some speculation, but not. So. Yeah. I saw like video titles with that, but no, I didn't click on those. They did. So uh, I want to. Yeah, because they did crack it, and uh, I thought it was that, pretty like, interesting. What what they found. was it? Yeah, it was interesting. Not uh, like, you know, not like too insane. Yeah, but it was fun, and hmm. but there is also these other rumors about like um, in the, the next yeah sense. the DLC yeah yeah the that there's, there's the like headstone. different sounds and voices there and stuff. So yeah, and the speculation was also always that drop zone the Northlands or whatever. Yeah, uh, because the original Dark Souls was you know there was a, an entire zone skipped due to like a development crunch or something but a right. lot of assets 
was left in the game for that. And people have been like digging through the code and really, really, you know, going through the absolutely nitty gritty, developing their own tools for for extracting stuff you know, yeah, yeah. deep within the code. And they do. they've un yeah, as they do, you know, crazy people with lots of time on their hands. But yeah, they've uncovered that some of the zone was completed, like models for the for, for basically the entire level and some of the enemies mm. or at least concepts were that were left in the game in the code. And the speculation is that they're gonna redo that zone in a DLC if they're allowed to, you know. Yeah. By the big overlords. <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, I'm sure they want more money. It's a good way to do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, that's... I've never played Demon's Souls, so for me, that's like... Yeah, that would be very positive. And that's what I want, you know. That's what we were talking about earlier, that that little extra, that little incentive to rebuy, even though I never bought it. So I'm obviously going to play it. But I'm going to wait for PC, I think. Yeah, and if the DLC comes, I'm waiting for PC obviously as well since I have the yeah. Xbox. But then, I if the DLC comes, I'm buying the version with the DLC. I'm willing to pay some more cash to get the full experience. Get the know? full experience. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the Dark Souls, I the Dark Souls three, I bought all of the DLC. It was worth it ten times over. Even yeah. though like there were criticisms, but. I just love my Dark Souls, you know, so. <laughs> Understandable. More Dark Souls is always uh, always good. Yeah, I, and I also did the same thing for Dark Souls 2 and Scholar of the First Sin. Yeah, what do you, th yeah, Scholar of the First Sin, yeah. What did you think of Dark Souls 2 uh, DLC? It was heralded as very good DLC, right? That That's all the, um, <coughs> if I don't remember it's... wrong, it's the different kings, right? Yeah, that's the different kings. Yeah, so I thought they were pretty fun because it was very like all the zones were really different. They had some; mm. they were challenging to me. I'm not like a very hardcore pro player on the, in Dark Souls, so for me it was like a, a good challenge. And um, yeah. it took you know it was more content on the same up to the same standard as the base game. So I was all about it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, that uh, it was universally praised by the community. Mm. Uh, but the game Dark Souls 2 was also universally hated on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think that's deserved, but that, because that's that that was the first Dark Souls uh, Souls game I played. Oh, uh, I see. And I remember I that's like I have nostalgia for that game. So right. I romanticize about that and especially like when I hear that Majula music and I see the the sunset, yeah, uh, I mean, I get a special type of feeling that just can't be replicated anywhere else. <laughs> and I get it because I was also one of the people that liked it a lot, and I thought, like, I played the first one first, so, yeah. and I will admit that there were things that they changed from the first one that I wasn't a fan of, but yeah. I also thought that the game as a whole was still a very solid Dark Souls experience. And like you, I completely understand the Majula love. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, I, I heard, uh, the, I heard uh, the song in my head as well as soon as you mentioned it and the sunset. So like, I clearly oh. it did something right. I mean, that that is what video game art is all about. That feeling you get when you when you come to Majula for the first time and it's this abandoned little village on the edge of the cliff into the yeah. sea and you can just see, you know, out to the horizon and you just feel that this world is on its last breath, you know, and that's what it's supposed to symbolize. The fire is fading, you know, and yeah. the sun is setting on this world and the, mo the melancholic infusion that you get from that and all of the desperate people forgetting why they came you know forgetting who they are yeah just sitting there wasting away like ashes you know it's it's such beautiful symbolism oh my god i could gush over that but yeah <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I think that we need to wrap this up now because we've been keeping up for quite some time. Yeah. But yeah. What do you do you want to wrap it up? Is it well final words? The good thing about the this kind of topic is that you know there's all sorts of angles and all sorts of interpretations here. So um, mm. we'd love to hear your pick for any of these categories yeah. that we covered, or um, you know any of the standouts that you wish maybe could have taken one of the nominees' place as the game of the year. Like for me, it would have been Yuxa Like a Dragon because I'm biased. Um, <laughs> but we would love to hear it from you guys as well. Um, and um, for those of you for Spotify, again, if you want to, if you feel like you want to help help us out, just like leave a like on the video on on YouTube as well. Um, that would help us a lot. And as always, remember to stay humid. And stay dank.